We're walking in undiscovered scientific realms where man has never been before. Star brought us to the entrance of new worlds of wonder where no that can't be crossed. In the last dynamic decade, science has rolled away the mist of centuries and given man a vision of things to come undreamed of only a few short years ago. Jet airplanes at supersonic speeds have left the sound barrier far behind. The mysteries of nuclear fission ceased to exist when man unleashed the hydrogen bomb the most tremendous force our Earth has ever known. And far out into outer space roar man-guided missiles reporting back new secrets of the universe. These tremendous advances and new discoveries are the direct result of the dedicated concentration of American industry to creative scientific research. In the vanguard of the industrial leaders in electronic research strides Philco Corporation, whose scientific discoveries and inventions have helped make possible many of the new miracles of our times. Early electronic research in the field of transistors gave promise of new developments that would revolutionize communications equipment, as well as control systems for rockets and guided missiles. Work begun by Philco in 1949 in this phase of electronics paved the way to eventual large-scale transistor production for both civilian and military consumption. In the Philco Research Division, an entirely new technique of making transistors was invented. A new liquid jet etching process was developed, so gentle that the thickness of the material, so important for proper electrical characteristics, could be regulated molecule at a time. Thickness was gauged during the etching process by passing a beam of invisible infrared light from one liquid jet to another through the semiconductor. When the light intensity reached the proper level, the current was turned off automatically so that thickness was maintained with acute accuracy. With similar jets, but with the current reversed, the proper material was deposited at critical spots on exact opposite sides of the wafer. Surprisingly, it turned out that a blank cut from this germanium wafer, the heart of the transistor, assembled in this manner did not need to be alloyed, but was ready to operate as a transistor as soon as it was clean and had connector wires attached. This tremendously important discovery resulted in Philco's development of the surface barrier transistor, which, because it could be etched with precision accuracy to one ten thousandth of one inch, could perform phenomenally with great dependability on very high frequencies. Here was a tiny element, more than capable of replacing a vacuum tube that would revolutionize the vast, ever-growing computer field. In addition, new frontiers were crossed in wide applications for modern military field communications equipment and critical circuitry demanded for industrial uses. Following a year of intensive development in this remarkable research laboratory discovery, which made surface barrier transistors a commercial reality, Actual production was commenced at Philco's ultra-modern Lansdale tube plant. In the meantime, Philco Research, in a continuing study of the transistor field, developed a new method for preparing an alloy junction transistor having thickness controlled by electrochemical etching, but still maintaining the high gain of an alloy transistor. This new type was named the micro-alloy transistor. Combined with the surface barrier, these two together make an ideal team in computer circuits. Demands for Philco transistors from both the government and industry began to grow by leaps and bounds. And increases in transistor production area at Lansdale began to stretch available facilities beyond their limits until it became obvious a new plant was needed. Today in the thriving little Pennsylvania town of Spring City, Philco maintains a completely air-conditioned modern plant with over 90,000 square feet of productive facilities exclusively devoted to the manufacture of the highest quality transistors in the industry. In contrast to its quiet countryside surroundings, Philco's Spring City plant hums with excitement and a sense of destiny. To the Spring City plant, capable of turning out many millions of transistors, come valuable bars of precious germanium, as well as other components that will shortly, through delicate hand and automated operations, become one of the many varying types of Philco transistors. From minute M1s for hearing aids and larger alloy junction types for auto radios to the highly critical types for intricate computer systems. Every piece of material that goes into a Philco transistor is given rigid electrical characteristic quality tests before acceptance. 
Special attention and special checks are made upon the bars to make sure that they measure up to Philco's high specifications and only the purest germanium is accepted. In preparing the wafers for a transistor, the highest standards of cleanliness must be maintained in every step of the process and complete purification is stressed from the moment the original material arrives until the finished transistors are packed with their multitude of exact matched twins for shipment to new and ever-increasing uses in modern streamlined electronic products. The first step in the highly mechanized process of transistor manufacture requires the growing of large pure crystals and carbon crucibles built into steel furnaces capable of ignoring all earth vibrations. Here, for example, the germanium ingot is formed in a tiny electronic oven heated to 1400 degrees centigrade by precise electronic controls. Into this pure crystal of precious molten germanium, growing like a seed into an ingot, are injected certain controlled impurities, such as antimony or arsenic, known to transistor scientists as doping agents. This insertion of impurities, introduced at tolerances as close as one part to a million, gives the finished germanium ingot the desired polarity and electrical characteristics which will be demanded in its future use. Whether in the driver's seat of an intercontinental ballistics missile or bringing entertainment to you on a cordless radio in your home. Only a certain center portion of the finished ingot bearing the proper characteristics can be used for the actual manufacture of the transistor core. X-ray tests check this orientation of the semiconductor ingot. Now diamond impregnated saw slice the quality approved ingots into thin wafers. In several steps, these saw cut wafers are lapped down on both sides simultaneously between two rotating precision plates with an abrasive compound flowing over them. They are then immersed in a strong chemical solution which etches them down to the desired smoothness and thickness. Through all of these processes, the wafers are never touched by human hand for the slightest impurity annealing to their surface would ruin their future life. The gleaming smooth wafers are now automatically cut into strips. Then the strips are placed in machines that automatically cut them into the desired size blanks, where experienced technicians sort them with vacuum pickups. Next, the precious blanks go to a roller gauge, which automatically measures their thickness to high precision. It groups them in bins and rejects for further etching any that do not meet its rigid mechanical selection. Much of the mechanized machinery needed in transistor production had to be designed and built by Philco scientists and engineers, for only they knew exactly what each machine must accomplish in the fantastically complicated production of a transistor. This Philco developed equipment has modernized transistor manufacture to a point where these mighty midgets of the electronic world can be rapidly produced almost like lollipops in a candy factory. New modern methods of mechanization are daily being added with eventual complete automation, a near future reality. Now the blanks are packed in glass jars, categorized by size and measures of resistivity, and are ready for transfer to the manufacturing floors where they will become the hearts of many different types of transistors for a multitude of products. At the entrance to any manufacturing area at Philco's Spring City plant are vacuum welcome mats, which pull the dust and lint from your shoes. One more insurance that no impurities contaminate the hospital clean air in which the various transistors are made. The blanks are precision soldered to a part of their final case, which is already mounted in a specially designed carrier block that transports it through numerous operations. Now the assembled blanks go to the etching machines where automatic transfer takes them through a number of complicated processes. Under intense light, which speeds up the etching processes due to germanium's light reactive properties, tiny depressions are etched on both sides of the blank. This process consists of a rough etch, rinse, precision etch, rinse and plating. An infrared light controls the precision etch process to the exact desired dimensions. Next, by the use of suitable jets, the infinitesimal dots on opposite sides of the transistor blank are plated. Another rinse, drying and a punch through measurement to make sure closest tolerances are met follow. Now the blanks before leads are attached are given another rigid inspection. If this test is passed satisfactorily, an emitter lead and a collector lead will all be automatically positioned. This operation is so minute that a powerful double microscope is required to observe it. This Philco developed machine pushed back old barriers in transistor production and became responsible for new advances in transistor reliability. After the partially assembled germanium surface barrier transistors have had their leads and glass base attached, they are given a final cleanup etch in which the bath solution is only used once then to vacuum ovens where they are baked at high temperature. 
From the vacuum baking ovens, they are transferred directly to huge plastic cases. The atmosphere within these cases is bone dry. In this moisture-free atmosphere, trained technicians sitting outside the plastic case and working with rubber gloves through air-sealed apertures subject the transistor to many various checks and tests to determine its characteristics and make sure it meets the high standards of future performance that Philco has set for it. If it passes, its top is placed on and precision projection welded, providing a permanent seal so that air, moisture, dust and light can never enter its interior. Then into a bake-out oven it goes for 15 hours. Transistors which survive under these high temperatures will give the greatest future dependability. It is then checked out to various electrical parameters at different voltages under the most exacting conditions. In final checking for power transistors, there is one miraculous machine that tests seven complicated electrical characteristics with a scorching speed of seven seconds. Capable of handling 550 completed transistors an hour, it automatically rejects any faulty units the second it spots an error. From each day's run, finished transistors are selected at random for life tests. Extended life tests approximate as high a lifespan as 20 years actual and continuous use in the field. In addition to the surface barrier transistor, which went into mass production at Philco in 1955, rapid gains in research culminated in the development of new methods for producing an alloy junction in which the material penetrated into the semiconductor only one millionth of an inch. This new transistor, named microalloy, had a gain of 10 times that of the surface barrier, making the two a perfect pair in computer circuits, one giving speed, the other high gain. Philco also makes alloy junction power transistors from the tiniest imaginable for hearing aids to larger sizes that power auto radios. Recently into production have gone new high frequency silicon transistors, which are superior to anything yet built for dependability and performance. Today, Philco transistors are serving in a number of products for government and industry where great dependability is required. They serve in the complicated equipment required for the guidance of all types of missiles. Into the panels that control computers and data process equipment go hundreds of Philco transistors forming the electronic brains of these fabulous modern machines. In home entertainment, Philco all transistor radios are the top performing portables in the radio world. So dependable in performance and long life that a Philco became the first radio ever to bear a five-year guarantee. In hearing aids, the tiniest transistors bring the world of sound conveniently back to those unfortunates who have lost it. Radios using Philco transistors have been built into helmets worn by our infantry so that they can be in constant communications with their command posts. In the electronic systems of jet aircraft navigational and fire control equipment, Philco transistors have more than justified the faith placed in them by our Air Force. The discovery and production of Philco transistors is a masterpiece of scientific engineering genius and a witness to the ingenuity of modern technicians. And now it can be revealed that when the first Earth satellite is launched in this geophysical year, Philco transistors will be at the heart of its communication system electronically reporting back from outer space. Philco transistors were chosen by the United States government due to their superior performance and extreme dependability. Another triumph of Philco advanced research, as Philco transistors journeying through the black night of space send back descriptions of new scientific discoveries. The future of transistors is all before us. Their use and application has only just become known. Future technological advances will undoubtedly create tasks only they can perform. And in this future, Philco transistors will stride like modern Gullivers through Lilliputian lands to new achievements for mankind. <laughs>